Good evening, everyone. My name is Cantor Kurt Schmidt, and I'm coming to you live from Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church in Deerfield Beach, Florida. I'm joined tonight by Ana Cristina Ojeda from Trustbridge of Broward and Palm Beach County. She is here again with us tonight to share her knowledge and wisdom on the topic of thanks living uh, and an attitude of gratitude in our holiday season. I uh, would invite your questions in the chat boxes in both Zoom and Facebook Live. Uh, we'll be monitoring those throughout the quick presentation, uh, and this will be archived for uh, future use and viewing uh, if anybody is uh, missing it currently. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Anna and thank her for being with us this evening, and, uh, and away we go. All right, thank you so much for having me again. It's my pleasure to join you. So my name is Ana Cristina Ojeda. I'm the outreach coordinator for Trust Rich, which was formerly Hospice of Palm Beach County and Hospice by the Sea. Now they're under, under the umbrella of Trust Rich. I'm in Broward County, but we work in Broward and Palm Beach counties. So I'm going to start with the presentation called Thanks Living. Second. Okay, there we go. And our thanks living presentation. Okay, so living with gratitude. It's our topic of the day, considering that Thanksgiving is approaching and everybody's talking about being grateful and having an attitude of gratitude. But how do we do that? But in order to do that, we need to know first what is gratitude? So in our objectives, we need to define what gratitude is. Then we will discover the positive effects of an attitude of gratitude, how good they are for you and for your health and for your well-being, for your emotional well-being. And then we're going to explore how to apply thanks living all year long, not only in, during Thanksgiving or the holiday seasons, but all year long. So before we start that, we need to know what is gratitude. Gratitude is a very powerful human emotion associated with pleasure. It makes us happy when we're grateful. It comes from the Latin word gratia, which means gratefulness or thankfulness. Because sometimes there can be a little bit of tension between what we want and what we actually have. And often the pursuit of that happiness of that, what we want can be endless and overwhelming and exhausting. So what we need to do, and we're going to start doing that right now, is taking a moment to give thanks for what we have right now. What are we grateful for that we have right now? It could be our health, our family, our job, our faith, our friends, our basic needs, um, but if we have that attitude of gratitude, it can transform common days into thanksgiving, routine jobs into joy, and it can change ordinary opportunities into blessings. Because when we're being grateful, it is a very quick way to shift our perspective. We focus on the silver linings. We see the, ha the glass half full instead of half empty. Because what happens, most negative attitudes are grounded in excessive self-absorbed unhappiness over one's own troubles. But if we live with an attitude of gratitude, of gratefulness, it's impossible for self-pity to thrive. And we need to keep in mind, when we're grateful, gratefulness cannot accompany bitterness. They cannot work together. Same thing when you're grateful, you cannot be unhappy at the same time. So you kind of replace the negative feeling with the positive one. When you're grateful, you cannot feel hopeless. And when you're grateful, you cannot be unloved. So just be grateful. It sounds easy, right? But how do we do that? So I'm going to teach you a few easy ways on how to do that. So when we express gratitude, it helps us in building and maintaining meaningful, meaningful relationships at work, with your family, with your friends, with your community, um, because again, you're focusing on the good things, not on the negative. 
It aids you, it can help you in coping with adversity. It can motivate you and help you get out of difficult situations. And gratefulness is always associated with happiness. So if you, again, if you focus on the positive things in those silver linings, there's no way that you're going to feel um, anxious, stressed, unhappy, or sad because you're replacing the negative emotions with the good ones, the positive ones. Um, and with, whether it is that we give thanks or somebody thanks us, just that attitude of gratitude, either we give it or we receive it, we're going to feel happy in return. So again, gratitude equals positivity. And it's directly related, gratitude with happiness and joy. Um, in the past, I have spoken about joy boomerangs. And joy boomerangs are things that we do, that we do something for others that gives them joy. And in return, we automatically receive joy. That's what happens with gratitude. Because when you do something for someone else, for your community, for your spouse, for your children, for your peers, if it's something positive, they're going to feel grateful about it and they're going to say thanks to you. And in return, how are you going to feel if somebody says thank you to you? Well, you're going to feel happy. You're going to feel appreciated. So you cannot go wrong if you do something positive for others because obviously in return, you're going to feel happy about yourself and you're going to feel grateful. So if you express gratitude to others, you can create a positive environment for everybody. Um, so there are six keys to living with gratitude because the effects of gratitude have been studied and in the brain they do affect it and they do help it rewire it in a long lasting matter. Um, your brain could be enhanced in sense of self-love, empathy, and it can affect also the part of the brain that works with emotions. So it can uh, regulate psychological conditions like stress, anxiety, depression. Just by having an attitude of gratitude, we can combat those feelings. So how do we do that? There are six things that we can do or that um, affect your body, your emotional state, when you have an attitude of gratitude. What are those six things? First, gratitude can release toxic emotions because again, um, thankfulness works in a, in a way that it promotes emotional health and it helps the promotion of the resolution of conflict. There have been studies made to groups um, that goes to therapy and a group is in charge of writing thank you notes and the other one just receives their regular counseling. Well, the group that writes thank you notes often improves faster than the one that didn't. Why? Because again, they're creating that joy boomerang. They say thank you to a person, to a, a situation, and in return, they feel better about themselves. So it definitely helps you release toxic emotions. And as I said, when you have that positive emotion, it cannot um, work together with a negative one. So you're replacing the anxiety for gratefulness, the depression for gratefulness, the sadness for gratefulness. So it will help. It will also help reduce pain because again, being thankful, um, believe it or not, works in your physical body. It helps regulate the levels of dopamine and dopamine is a hormone that reduces or help reduce the level of pain that you may have in your body. So when that hormone is released, you can regulate pain. So being thankful or it also helps you feel better. It improves the quality of sleep. Why is that? Because if you go to bed exhausted or overwhelmed or overly stressed out, do you think you're going to have a good night's sleep? I really doubt it. But when we go to bed and right before going to sleep and you say your prayers or you read or you do what you do on a regular basis, but you also give thanks and you have that peace of mind, you're immediately going to feel better. And if you feel better and more relaxed, 
your sleep is going to be better. So think about that. It will also affect your sleep. And there's nothing more important than your quality of sleep because if you have a good night's sleep, the day next day is going to be way better. If you don't have a good night's sleep, the next day you're going to be cranky, you're going to be tired, you're going to be on edge, and it's going to be harder to focus on the positive things in your life. So it's like a vicious cycle, right? It will also help you regulate stress because again, as I said, it works on your emotions, it works on your psychological states. So if you give thanks, well, you get a little less stressed out. And how would that work? That reminds me of a, a, a little trick that I read somewhere a while ago that it said, try to replace your I have to's with I get to, because your I have to's are the ones that get you really stressed out. For example, you think about a regular day. I have to go grocery shopping. I have to go pick up the kids. I have to take my mom to the doctor. I have to put gas in the car. I have to go to work. This huge list of things that you have to do. But if you replace them with, I get to, then you start seeing the blessing that they really are. You start seeing them as a great opportunity that you have that perhaps others may not have, or um, that it's a privilege that you get to do those things. I get to take my mom to the doctor. What an honor that I get to do that and, and bond with her and take care of her. I get to cook for my family. That's such a privilege that I get to do this for them. I feel honor. I get to go to work. What a blessing because others may have been unemployed right now and I get to keep my job and provide for my family. So that's an excellent trick, an idea to do. Replace your I have to's with I get to, and immediately your levels of stress are going to go down immensely. It also um, helps reduce anxiety and depression. And again, as I was saying, it's the same thing. A positive emotion is replacing the negative. You're going to feel less anxious and same with the I have to and I get to. Well, you feel very anxious if you have this huge list of things that you have to do. But if you feel like I get to do these things and now you do them with a positive attitude, with joy, with, oh my God, I get to, to spend time with my loved ones. Wow, it's definitely going to be a great opportunity and you're not going to see it as something that generates stress on you. And then it increases energy and vitality because being grateful, again, since you're reducing all those negative emotions and you're decreasing the levels of anxiety or stress, you feel energized. You feel that, wow, life is amazing. I have all these things to be thankful for. And there have been many of studies that show that it could increase um, longevity, that you have a longer life if you feel grateful, if you find the glass half full. So how can we apply it to your life? Well, um, I already gave you one example. You can uh, reflect on positive things before bedtime. And I recommend it either morning or night or both because you wake up in the morning and the first thing you say is thank you God for this day thank you that I get to wake up and spend the day with my loved ones thank you for the roof that I have over my head thank you for all the blessings that I have so I think it's a good way to start the day too but also to end it because then you're going to have good dreams you're going to have a good night's sleep, you're going to be comfortable. Then also creating a gratitude journal. I've seen on social media lately that there are like challenges, gratitude challenges, 30 day gratitude challenge. And I, I think that's a great idea. Um, every day you write something that you're grateful for. And I, when I give this talk, I always tell people, don't think about immense things that you're grateful for. It could be little things. It could be that you're grateful for your favorite pair of slippers. You're grateful that you can see the birds singing outside your window. You're grateful that you get to have your favorite tea 
every morning. It could be little things, but also you can go big and you're grateful for your family, for your loved ones, for a career that you love, a job that you love, um, that you were able to pursue your dream and accomplish it. You can go big, but it would it's nice. And since we're starting, we're still um, almost in the middle of the month. You can try that. You can write down every day until the end of the month something that you're grateful for every day. And then you can go back and reflect and you look at it and, whoa, I have 30 things that I'm grateful for. That's amazing. And I, I never even noticed that I have all these blessings in my life, all these amazing things going on that I, I've been taking for granted. Um, again, as I said, you can each morning consider three things that you're grateful for but it could be any number of things. Also, it's a very, very good exercise to ask others what they're thankful for because we may be taking things for granted that others are like, oh my God, you should be thankful for because you have all these things going on for you and I wish I had them. Or the other way around, they could be saying that they're thankful for something that they have and you have it as well and you didn't realize it was something pretty special. It could be anything. It could be your health that you may be taking for granted. It could be your parents that you are thinking, oh my God, they're getting old and they're driving me crazy. They're so annoying. And then somebody says, well, I'm grateful for my parents because I don't know how long I have left with them. And then you're like, oh, that's true. I need to treasure these moments or anything that people could be thankful for. I also always give the example that I'm thankful that I live in this country because the country where I'm from is not the best place ever. Um, it's Venezuela where people don't really have freedom of speech. Um, it's very unsafe. So I'm incredibly thankful that I've been living in this country and that my children get to grow up here. So there are so many things that if you ask others, it gives you a new perspective of what they're thankful for. And then you realize that you have a life full of blessings. And then the last one, remember to write and deliver thank you notes or, th or thank you letters. And this um, especially um, now geared to um, older folks, I recommend because nowadays we do everything via text or email, but we need to check on each other. So either write a personal note handwritten that people know that you took the time for it, or also they don't mention it here, but pick up the phone and call. Call people that you care about, about. tell them how thankful you are to have them in your life, share a story that you remember with them and check on them. Um, but make sure that you tell the people around you that you care about them, that you're thankful for them and be specific or uh, thank you for teaching me how to cook that recipe or thank you for, um, I, I, I say that to people at work, thank you for teaching me how to do these things because I didn't know how to do that. Thank you for taking the time also. And also this reminds me also of something that I learned a while ago too. Um, we have the tendency of saying sorry a lot and apologizing a lot, but we also should replace those I'm sorry's for thank you. Let's say you're running late um, for something and then you show up and the first thing that you say is, oh my God, I'm so sorry I'm late. But instead you can say, because when you say I'm sorry I'm late, then the people who receive that are annoyed that you're late, you are anxious and the whole now situation is of, anxiousness and stress. But if you replace it with thank you, if you say, oh my God, thank you so much for waiting for me. I truly appreciate your patience. Now they feel validated. You said thank you because they really waited for you. And now the environment is a much positive one that if you're just rushing and apologizing. And you can use that strategy too in any circumstance. Instead of saying sorry, you say thank you. Okay, um, then make sure that you're giving thanks, that you're making each and every opportunity on a daily basis to give thanks for every little thing that you can think of. Reflect on what you have, the people you love and the opportunities 
you've been afforded. Because again, not to compare yourself with others, but sometimes you should kind of look around and see because we have a lot of things and we take them for granted and we should be thankful for our health, our families, our loved ones, our work, or um, that we can go to the grocery store and buy what we'd like, that we have a lot of access to, to health and education and things like that. So we have been afforded great opportunities and we should all be thankful for, even in days when we feel exhausted, when we're tired, because we had a lot of work, we had things to, to do. Again, we're thankful that we have a job. We're thankful that we have the health to perform at such job. So, you know, it's trying to shift the perspective. Um, so be thankful for what you have. This is what Oprah Winfrey said. You'll end up having more. If you concentrate of what, on what you don't have, you will never, ever have enough. And I wanted to show you another thing, um, tell you another thing that Maya Angelou said. She said, if you don't like something, change it. And if you cannot change it, then change your attitude. So again, let's focus on what we're thankful for. And remember that attitudes are contagious. So if you're feeling grateful and positive and happy, the people around you are going to be like, oh, how is she doing this? I want to feel the way she's feeling. Oh, she's giving thanks every little second that she has. Well, I'm going to try and do the same. And that's all I have for now. If I have any questions, comments, concerns, I'm here for you. And Kurt, I think I made you the host back again. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I'm looking, oh, there we are both on screen. Uh, okay. I don't know that it matters at this point who is the host and who is not, uh, <laughs> but I have to tell you once again, um, if, if nothing else, you spoke directly to me <laughs> and, uh, and the stress and anxiety of my day and week, and uh, once again reminded me to, uh, to find that, uh, that feeling of gratitude, and uh, that's a wonderful thing, and I want to encourage everybody that is watching on Facebook or here with us on Zoom or watching later on, uh, either on our YouTube channel or, or on Facebook or the website where it's archived, um, to embrace uh, what we've learned tonight and uh, what we've talked about and, and let it spill over into your own life uh, with your family, your friends, those you love. Uh, those you don't love, uh, <laughs> those for whom loving might be a challenge right now, uh, there's, there's always something to be grateful for uh, in every situation and with every person. So I want to uh, thank you, Anna, for that wisdom and for being with us again. Uh, it really is a blessing, this partnership <laughs> that we have. And uh, thanks to everybody for being a part of it. I want to give one quick reminder for those that are watching this uh, live. Uh, we have our Thanksgiving Eve Eve worship service, which is a very, I think, unique to Zion tradition that we gather not on uh, the day before Thanksgiving or Thanksgiving, but on Tuesday evening. Join us here on Facebook Live uh, for worship. We'll be uh, live streaming from our Katie Luther Chapel. Tuesday night at seven o'clock and uh, pay attention to the website for other holiday opportunities uh, during the Advent season. I want to end tonight with a quick word of prayer uh, for all those who are with us and for those who are watching later on and really for our world. So uh, would you pray with me? Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, live in gratitude for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and everybody said, Amen. Amen.
Thank you again, Anna. Everybody have a wonderful night. And uh, we will see you again in worship in these presentations and uh, all over social media where we seek to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Good night, everybody, and blessings. Thank you for having me. Good night.